What is up, viewers? The Washington Villarx back here. I'm proposing a question: What if the Sadines retire? This is an important thing that I'm going to be talking about here. This is a series that I'm probably going to make several videos on. Um, Vancouver Canucks, what if situations, scenarios, things that either might happen in the future or might have happened in the past, could have happened in the past, didn't happen in the past, what ifs. Hypothetical situations. So, what if the Sedines retire is a topic I'd like to bring up today. First off, what do the Sedines mean to the Vancouver Canucks? Well, Arguably, they represent the physical embodiment of a Vancouver Canuck, and they have done this for the past 16 years. They got drafted in 99, they didn't start playing until 2001, I believe, but for a very long time already, the Sedines have just had that level of maturity and just overall dedication to the community. That a pure Vancouver Canuck embodies. It's arguable that no sport will ever see a set of identical twins on the same team with such dominance as the Sedines. They mean a lot to the team, and I'd argue they mean quite a bit to hockey as well, as they are packed with achievements. You got the Art Ross for both of them, Daniel won the Lindsay, Olympic gold they both have, world championship gold they both have, the Golden Puck in Sweden, they were both named to the All-Star teams, and they also got Hart Trophies. They've got records as well, as they are number one and number two in all-time Canucks points. They're 200 points, I believe, above third place, which is Marcus Naslin, and both of them are very close to 1,000 points each. Henrik Sedin is closer, but Daniel Sedin is on an eight-game point streak right now, not trying to hint at anything, just saying. Leadership is also one of the bigger qualities in the Sedin's demeanors. Take a look at the things they've been doing for the city of Vancouver, all the community support, all the donations. You see that million dollar anonymous donation they did? I don't know if it was a million or two million, something like that, but they donated to the hospital, and they've probably donated quite a bit over the years. They've also done a lot of community events, helping out younger kids in the lower mainland area, supporting all of BC, because they're just that dang into being the leaders and just overall making everybody a better person here in our area. The only thing that the Sedines don't have on their resume is a Stanley Cup. Of course, this has been a very big topic to talk about. Oh, the Sedines, they're going to retire without a cup. But it's very, it's very not necessary if you want to talk about how great the Sedines were. Because there are a lot of players who don't have a cup. And a lot of players who you say, yeah, man, those are some good players, despite not having a cup. And I do believe that the Sedines will make the Hall of Fame someday. Most likely on the same ballot even though they don't have that Stanley Cup. Their list of records, Art Ross, Lindsay, Hart, um, Olympic gold, World Championship gold, all these great things, along with being such great people and being so unique, that's definitely a good trait to have for a very talented set of players who bring their very own unique style of game right out there onto the rink. The Sedines mean so much to the Vancouver Canucks, and everybody loves the Sedines. However, I do believe that they are in a limbo. This team is going in a different direction that they are going in themselves. Times are looking grim in terms of the Sedines winning the cup, because the Sedines, they're on a team that isn't good. We're not going to sugarcoat it anymore. The Canucks are not that good this year, and... If you want to say, you can move the Sedines to a contender, and you can give them that Stanley Cup that they deserve, that's going to be kind of a very bad bet to make, because the Sedines, $7 million each, no trade clauses, it's not going to really work out. And it's limbo because it would be a waste to have the Sedines rot away with a rebuilding team such as the Vancouver Canucks. If the Sedines retired in the near future, the direction of the team would be 100% let's go rebuild. No more forced competitiveness and no more enforcement of a winning environment. 
Trades would be made to accommodate the future, just like the GM mode trades I've been making. Trades that make the team good now, while also not sacrificing the future in one little aspect. Horvat and Hutton, these two guys would be forced to take over the team. One of them might get the A. Who knows he'll get the C, um, we really can't guess that at this point. And the team overall would be forced to move into a new youthful generation. We're gonna have new guys come in like Oli Olivi, Brock Besser, Thatcher Demko, and you know, potentially Jake Vertanen. These guys will be the upcoming difference makers on the team. If the Sedins retire, this shift from a competitive, we want to win now team, it will come and it will approach much faster towards the we need to get younger and we need to improve our younger guys. It would be a good shift, and if the Sedins retire, they would catalyze this shift to come sooner rather than later. If the Sedins stay here longer, this process will be dragged out, and the Canucks won't commit 100% to building for the future, just like they have been now. Take a look at the moves they've done. They got themselves Louis Erickson, Eric Goodbranson. These are moves that will necessarily deteriorate, or damage the future, but there are moves that some people can look at and say, why are you doing that? You guys aren't a competitive team. And that's the whole point of this. I'm not anti sedines I'm a fan who wants to see the Canucks succeed. The sedines they'll retire as legends, and they're definite retirees for the Vancouver Canucks franchise. I can't wait to watch number 22 and number 33 get raised up into the rafters, because that's definitely going to happen. It's a shame that they never got a chance to lift the cup with Vancouver, and from the direction the team is heading in right now, it's really not looking like they're going to win a cup with the Canucks. It's very evident to say the Sedins don't really have a shot of winning the cup at all, because they're not going to be able to get traded. They have every other achievement to achieve, and their overall value to the organization, as well as their clear uniqueness in play style and identity, they're identical twins for crying out loud. This will leave them as one of the most memorable duos in NHL history for generations to come. People are going to look at the Canucks of the mid-2000s and the early 2010s, and they're going to see, wow, the Sedins. These guys were fantastic. Identical twins with this much dominance in the highest level of professional hockey in the world. That is incredible. And it's a shame to see the Canucks in this position, because they're in a position right now where they have some Sedins who are getting older. They're not declining, though, because they're still putting up some great points. They're getting older, they're nearing the finish line of their careers, and all the Canucks have to show for it is, this is our best effort, we can't really do that well in the playoffs right now, because we're a team that isn't necessarily geared towards that. No matter what the GM says, this team is not a playoff team. If you look at this roster and you look at it going into the playoffs, you see other teams that are going up against the Vancouver Canucks as hypothetical. You're going to say, the Sedins, I love you guys, but the Canucks don't really have a chance. Looking at the team and what they're achieving now, this wishy-washy, fickle, win a game, lose a game, lose a whole bunch in a row, this is getting unsatisfying to watch, and it's just an indication of how the team is refusing to get into rebuild mode. They're enforcing the we need to win now mentality, but it's not working clearly because they're not winning now. The bottom line is the departure, retirement, or albeit unrealistic trade of the Sedins will result in a team that will get better faster because our rebuild will show no limits. If the Sedins, for whatever reason, won't play for the Vancouver Canucks anymore, this will be the big green light for all of the Canucks to go, yep, we're going into rebuild mode, we're starting this right now because we need to get better faster. Hope you guys enjoyed this picture of Possing and Nostra Shows, like and Nostra Gaming, and bye.